Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dialing In. And today I'm going to start looking at a few features on the Helix, what I kind of have referred to in the title as hidden gems. And what I'm referring to are some of the legacy effects. Now, I'm probably just as guilty as others, and I'm sure a lot of you do use the legacy effects a lot, but it's one of those things I always sometimes forget to, that they're there and to dive into. I, having said that though, I do use some, I use a lot of the reverbs, but when it gets into like modulation and compression and you know overdrive pedals, distortion pedals, I kind of just put those on the back burner. And I've heard from other folks that they do the same because we tend to think we have the new HX version and that's all we need. And in a lot of cases, it just may be, but there are some really interesting things hidden within our legacy effects, which are basically effects models that were brought over from previous versions of Line 6 uh, products, mostly these hardware versions that had these effects, and we now have them in the Helix. So it's not a really good thing, and I, I scold myself just as much for it to kind of ignore those. So today I'm going to look at a very simple effect, which is the tube comp from our legacy effects, and talk about a pretty interesting use for it. Now some might say, why would you use that when we have the Alley Studio Comp in the Helix? And anybody who's watched my channel knows that I really love using the Alley Studio Comp. It's an absolute favorite of mine. I love putting it at the end of the signal chain, adding just a touch of compression to glue things together. But the Tube Comp, which is also sort of the older version of the Alley Studio Comp, is a much more streamlined, simple to dial in effects block, which actually sometimes is a very nice thing, especially with how I'm gonna use it today. So without further ado, let's go over to Helix Native. And again, today I'm using Helix Native instead of HX Edit, simply because in Helix Native, we can actually see the gain reduction meters. And that's what I kind of want you guys to see as I'm using this. So let's come over here to Helix Native. And all I've done is I've thrown together an extreme extremely simple preset here. I threw a tiny bit of, well, there you go, legacy room reverb on with a decay of 6.5, pre-delay of 11 milliseconds, mix of 30%. <clears throat> I didn't touch the lower the high cut. I quickly loaded in a Tweed Blues Norm with these settings that you see here. Not that that's what this is about, but drive is at five, bass is at three, six and a half on mid, 6.4 on treble, 2.7 on presence, channel volume correct to 10, master on 10, and I didn't touch the deeper functions. I Went with the stock cab that pops up with that, 410 uh, Tweed P10R. I threw a 121 ribbon mic on it, two and a half inches back. Now, just with those settings and those two blocks, this is the sound we have. All right, so fairly clean. With this amp model, if I was to crank that uh, drive up to 10, we do get a little bit of breakup out of it, <clears throat> but it's a very particular overdrive, very particular breakup. Now I'm using a, a guitar with single coil pickups, a Strat style guitar. If you were to use something with higher output humbucker pickup, it's gonna drive it into distortion a little bit more. <clears throat> but let's deal with this for now. Now, if I come along and add a tube comp to this, so I go to my dynamics, I go down to the legacy menu, and I simply grab the tube comp. We see something very interesting here in that there are two parameters to adjust, threshold and level. Much like the original LA Studio comps to knobs on the front. I believe one is referred to as gain reduction on that though. So the threshold, as with other compressors, is going to decide at what point this compressor is going to kick in. But the interesting thing about this is if this is a true model of an LA Studio Comp, there should be some non-linearities involved from the tube aspect of the compressor, which can add a certain sweetness to it. And that's why I like the LA Studio Comp at the end of the chain, even if it's barely touching on the compression aspect. Like I say, a lot of times I'm going for a dB, a dB and a half, sometimes even just half a dB. But depending on where we put the gain control, we do get some nice sweetness to the sound from it. And I find the same thing here. So instead of using this at the end of the chain, I'm gonna slap it at the beginning and use this more as almost a clean boost to hit the front of the amp, to drive it harder, maybe get into some more overdrive 
but a clean boost with some character, if that makes any sense, and the ability to add a little bit of smoothness by compressing the tone as well, except that we have the control of the compression. So if I just bring it in as such with the settings it comes up with, which is 0.5 on the threshold, 0.19 on the level, I really don't know what this is gonna do at this point, but let's see if it actually has a low enough threshold to add any gain reduction here. You notice on that last hit, we saw the gain reduction meter move. So it's really not set where it's doing any major compression. But if I simply just turn that on and off, already because we're hitting with more level, it's driving the front of the amp harder and we're getting a very particular kind of tone from this. So if I bring that level all the way down, it's still kind of hitting it harder. So we can go all the way from the level at zero or go really extreme with it. And we really kind of bring out some interesting characters from the Fender Tweed Blues model. Now, if I turn that off and crank the gain again on the Tweed Blues Norm. We don't get anywhere near the level of distortion we got by bringing this in. But I think it adds a certain other feel change to it too, at least to my ears and to, to my fingers. So obviously that may be very extreme, but, and obviously we also have a very big volume jump. As would be expected. But even bringing this in at a lower setting of say 0.25, versus having it off. It can be used as a really cool lead boost or clean boost to just hit the front of the amp harder. Well, where it gets even more interesting though is when we start to bring that threshold down to where there's a little bit more compression. Now we could also, where we see the gain reduction isn't moving, but let's move the threshold all the way. So we see even though we don't see the gain reduction moving, by bringing that threshold down, it's still changing the character of the sound. And if we go back with the level on zero, There's even the slightest change even still, but as we bring that threshold down, there's where it finally starts to kick in a little bit. When I hit really hard, let's bring it down a touch more. And again, this is the gain reduction meter. This is telling you when the compressor kicks in and how much it's reducing the gain by. So it's 
adding something there nice. Now if we turn that off. Now if we bring that level back in, well actually let's do this, let's bring the threshold way down. Versus off. a major mojo and character going on there, probably a little much. Let's go back up to maybe, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe 0.35. Kind of getting anywhere from one to three dB of gain reduction, depending on what I'm hitting. If I'm hitting really light. Might just peek in there every now and then. Let's leave that and then let's bring our level control into where we're pushing that amp a little more now. You'll see the sustain it adds and the character it adds to the sound. Again, obviously there is a volume jump as well. But what we've taken here with this basement sound which is hard to compare because the volume is so low on this. So what I've done is I've created two snapshots now. Snapshot one is going to be the uh, tube comp turned off, the amp model with the channel volume on 10, and snapshot two is going to be the channel volume dropping to six and a half with the tube comp on to compensate for the fact that we're adding more volume. So now we can go back and forth between these and hear the difference between just what that tube comp is doing. So here it is without the tube comp. Now with. I'll go back and forth again. Now, could all of that have been done with the LA Studio Comp? Very likely, I don't know. I haven't really compared the two to see uh, what similarities and differences there are between the two, but what I like about the Tube Comp, and I think what a lot of folks might appreciate, is just the simplicity. Threshold level. Just understanding what they're doing, which is what I showed today, will help you to kind of instinctively be able to add that into maybe a particular situation. It's not gonna be used for everything, but if we're looking for a different quality of boost where we can actually control the amount of compression, control the amount we're hitting the front end, and then balance those two, we can get some very nice tones with some serious mojo to them that, that, that work really, really nice. And we could try this with higher gain amps too. You know, a lot of times compressors aren't really necessary, but this might add a certain something that might be kind of interesting. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I, I'm going to be taking a look at some more of the legacy effects uh, over the, the coming weeks and months. Uh, there's some pretty cool little hidden gems, as I called them, in there. And I think uh, a lot of folks that maybe or even somewhat like me where I just kind of went, yeah, yeah, legacy effects, okay, they're there, I know. 
maybe we can open up some doors and get some even cooler sounds out of our Helix uh, than we already do. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope you'll enjoy the episodes that are coming up. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get use out of watching it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the little bell notification again, notify when I put new content out. I'll be back soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.